He was NASA's first black astronaut trainee, but Ed Dwight never actually made it all the way into space. But that is certainly not where the story ends. Alexa Liaco explains how he cemented himself in history. When it comes to black history, Ed Dwight knows a thing or two about preserving it. I've done uh, 132 memorials and public art pieces dedicated to black folks. The largest is in Texas. That's the Texas African American History Memorial. That's the biggest one of all. But what you might not know is that Dwight has cemented his own place in history and from an early age has been breaking the mold. I integrated a white Catholic high school back in 1947 which was kind of breaking a record. Did art all the way through school, but I had won the first three uh, ribbons in the Kansas State uh, Art uh, Scholarship thing throughout the state of Kansas. And I had won the first three ribbons and that never had been done. After high school, Ed set his sights on new heights. I saw an opportunity to fly. And this was during the Korean War. They were, I found out they were letting blacks fly during the Korean War, so I joined the Air Force. In 1953, he enlisted in the United States Air Force and was enjoying a successful career as an Air Force pilot and officer. And that's when one letter gave his career one giant leap. And they offered me a, a, the possibility of going to test pilot school. A, and hopefully if I graduated from there successfully, I would be considered for the first, at the time, Negro astronaut. And uh, I wasn't excited about it. And I initially told them no. But my mother came into the picture and she says, you better do this. <laughs> and you know what they say, mother clearly knows best. The White House asked Dwight to go from flying military jets to piloting space shuttles. And that's when he became the first black man to train to be an astronaut. While he did not finish the program, he understood his role. Uh, and it was because of me that there was a conversation about blacks in space. Had I not done that, that would not have been, it would have been, it was 20 years from the time I was, we went into the program till we saw uh, other blacks that were appointed to the program. So at least I opened the conversation. With his feet back on the ground, Dwight went back to work, starting several businesses, including a career in construction where his love for art took shape. He would go on to create several pieces honoring African Americans like Duke Ellington and President Barack Obama. And now, Dwight is about to reach an even wider audience. He's now being featured in the National Geographic film, The Space Race. Very few people today even have a clue about black people's contribution to human spaceflight. Dwight hopes the lessons he learned during the space race will translate into the current political race that's front and center in a country he calls divided. I had this idea that nobody should run for public office or if they get nominated, uh, newly elected, that they're forced to take a, get on a spaceship and go around the Earth at least three times in orbit so they can see this planet uh, and see how everything's all integrated together. And, and all this division between countries and all that kind of stuff, if you look at it from, uh, from that uh, and see how the oceans work and see how the countries work and see there's, there's no lines between the states, there are no dividing lines when you open the air. And like those lines, whether real or imagined, Dwight says the limit to our potential is usually confined to the boundaries we place upon ourselves. You know, that we have something to offer and you got to use your brains and stuff like that to, to participate in this great adventure called life, you know what I mean? Alexa Liaco, Scripps News.